Owen Curry is the editor of Air and Travel magazine. How are you? Uh, good morning, Jonathan. Good form. How are you this morning? Not too bad. The summer is coming. It's just around the corner, Owen. We'll hold our breaths until such time as it arrives. Uh, but if you are heading out to Dublin Airport right now, it looks as if security times are good. 10 minutes in Terminal 1, 15 minutes in Terminal 2. But that hasn't stopped some cancellations because of COVID. Yeah, they may be lulling us into a false sense of security, Jonathan. It was a great weekend. Uh, for security carriers at Dublin Airport. The focus is term two cancellations. We have four of them today. We have three from Aer Lingus, Zurich, Manchester, Rome, and we have uh, the London City Airport by British Airways also cancelled because it hasn't just been Aer Lingus cancellations. But I do think that getting levels down, you know, we had much higher levels uh, towards the end of last week. We had 12 cancellations in one day. I think three, four is probably what we will rumble through the summer. It sounds a lot if you're on the flight, but if you've got 300 takeoffs, 300 landings every day, that is not abnormal. In fact, that would not have been abnormal in previous summers. Uh, that's a couple of flights, aircraft going tech, things like that. The real danger is, as Aer Lingus have been flagging, uh, they're stretched a bit in terms of their staffing and COVID absences can send uh, things over the edge. Both the Irish airlines decided to uh, put a very healthy schedule in place, very ambitious schedule in place, and stick to it. I noticed some of the other European airlines, like KLM, like Air France, like British Airways, and most recently EasyJet a fortnight ago, trimmed back the schedule because they didn't think they had the staff to meet it. The difference with Aer Lingus is they reckoned they had the staff to meet it and fell a bit short last week. Whether that continues to happen, I'm not sure. Yeah. I think they're, they've, uh, they've, they've managed fairly well in the last few well, days. Well, you have to give credit. I know people don't give Ryanair an awful lot of credit at any stage, but I think they had the busiest <laughs> July they ever had, and they have managed to meet most of their flight schedule. This is stunning. 15.9 million passengers in July. That makes them the second biggest airline in the world by passenger numbers. Uh, that puts them behind Southwest, ahead of Delta, ahead of American, ahead of United and the Chinese airlines. Uh, a lot of them have uh, trim back schedules that mightn't, they mightn't hold that uh, position. But, you know, if you were second in the world in soccer or athletics or rugby, uh, we'd all be sort of jumping up and down with excitement. I think with, because of Ryanair, we do grit our teeth a bit and, and think of uh, somebody who was rude to us at the, at the <laughs> departure <laughs> gate. <laughs> Not at all. They were all very polite and pleasant to me. It was the general experience that sometimes fell short. And it is the general experience you're, probably you're that Dublin Airport... Fit it into the size of another case <laughs> Never happened. Never happened to me. Thank God. Oh, the problem is, is the experience at Dublin Airport um, is, is poor when you get past security. It's the bit between security and the aircraft. If the plane is going, which the vast majority of them are, and getting through security, it, the, the, from pe speaking to people, it's chaotic beyond the security. Yeah. Um, and you can't get a cup of coffee, uh, you know, it's dirty, it is not the image we want to project of our country. And you have to say that falls back to the DAA, it's there, that's the, literally the bit they're responsible for. Well, it's a part of it falls to the DAA, the DAA is the security queue, uh, a lot of it, the rest of it is actually subcontractors. And then, we, you know, we have the... They're subcontracted problem. by the DAA, and they, they have to take responsibility for the bit that they own themselves, which is the property. Absolutely, but they, all the companies that have that subcontracting, those are contracts for the different things, including the catering, including the retail, all have the same issues of staffing back up. It's shared across Europe. Uh, internationally, the Airports Council reckon about, they're short about 15% of the required staff. And the bits that you know you see falling apart at Dublin Airport, and I do not, uh, uh, I agree with you completely. The airport is it's bursting at the seams, and uh, it's really under pressure from everything: toilets, cup, getting that cup of coffee, even servicing the gates. Some of the airlines were told mm -hmm. we can't uh, commence your service because we don't have anyone to service your gate. All of those bits are under the same pressures. The answer to it is very simple. You staff up. Uh, the Dublin Airport themselves have been doing that 38 people a week into security. They now have more than 700, up from about 530 uh, when we had the first meltdown at the end of March. And the companies are doing it as well. The baggage handling companies, uh, quite uh, probably the ones that are getting the most publicity at the moment because of that huge baggage handling issue or, uh, by, in the terminal for their arriving passengers, uh, they say they've been staffing up by something like uh, 30, 40% in the last few weeks. 
staff will solve the problem. The issue is getting them on the ground and getting their clearances to go on to the security sensitive parts of the airport. Mm. One question that came in from a listener here. How come it's only the Aer Lingus crew and pilots that are getting COVID? You don't hear of it in Ryanair. I'm presuming that they are getting COVID as well, but they have sufficient crews to backfill. Yeah, this is important. Ryanair stayed didn't let people go during COVID. They kept their licenses for their pilots. They reckoned that they would keep the pilots and then, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't run into that log jam of getting licenses renewed and everything when, when it, uh, flights returned. But uh, the, and the same applied to the aircraft. They kept the aircraft certified. So they did have it staffed up. They're not invulnerable to it, though, because especially air traffic control strikes in France can push crews out of hours. So while you have a full roster and you've got your substitute for that roster, if uh, flight crews start running out of hours, it's not like a shop. You don't get someone to do two hours overtime. Uh, there are safety concerns here. You have to bring in a new crew.